Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another epic episode of House and Home. I'm your host, God Freeman Captigal, and I'm tonight bringing you the show from Lane's Ten Pin Bowling, situated on top of the La Mana Hotel. I mean, can you believe that there's a bowling alley located on top of a hotel? I think that's pretty cool, because most hotels usually have, like, a roof at the top. This place has a bowling alley, so that's pretty awesome. So we've got a special lineup for you this evening, an Easter lineup, might I add, because Easter is, in fact, this Friday. That's Good Friday, and I think that's pretty cool. So we've got a special lineup for you tonight, an Easter special, might I add, kicking it off with Chef Duane cooking for us a chicken Maryland casserole. And then right after that, we go to Brian Bell, in which Leon shows us some of their Easter specials. Right after that, Taubman's comes back to show us how to paint some more awesome stuff. And then we have some more product testimonials from Nijin Beauty. Followed by that, I cover Toro Gaming's brand new tournament, a FIFA tournament, so stay tuned all you FIFA and soccer fans. And then we finish off the show with some BSP products. So without further ado, let's head on into our first bit of the show. Let's cook some chicken. Here's Chef Duane showing us how to prepare a chicken Maryland casserole. Hi and welcome to Cooking with Dwayne. Today I'll be showing you how to make a chicken Maryland casserole. What we need today for this recipe is chicken Maryland pieces, plain flour, uh, cherry tomatoes, chicken stock you've already dissolved in water, salt and pepper, carrot, ginger, four garlic cloves and an onion. In order to make a chicken casserole we would have to coat chicken in flour and fry it first and later we'll put it onto a tray and bake it in the oven. I'm just gonna coat this chicken Maryland pieces in flour Can you use your hands? Casserole is a style used to cook tough pieces of meat or tough cuts of meat or big pieces of meat. Coating the, the chicken Maryland in flour it, uh, makes the gravy that comes with the casserole. Okay, that's done. Frying pan. Oh, if you have a pot, you can do this in a pot. I mean like a copper dish or mumu pot. Temperature a bit up to medium heat. Just cook the chicken one at a time. You don't want to crowd the pan, because crowding the pan, the meat tends to touch each other. It takes the heat off the pan and starts braising instead of frying. But we're just browning the chicken, we're not doing anything fancy with it, just browning it. So what I mean by tough cuts of meat, you could do this with lamb, pork. See, we're already getting some uh, browning already on the chicken. We just want to get this nice color on it. And once you've got that done, it's okay if it's charred, it's flavor. It adds, it's just more flavor. It's not cooked, it's just browned. We're just browning, we're not cooking the chicken. Okay, that's done, that's the last bit. Okay, now I'm gonna prepare the vegetables to go with the casserole. First, I'm gonna cut the onions into quarts. At first, just gonna cut this in half, like so. Always work with a sharp knife in the kitchen. Work is much more easier. This is how I like to cut my carrots. And then just slice it down like this. Why I'm doing this is because I just want uniform shapes so it cooks evenly. Wait, see what I mean? They're about the same size. Okay, uh, the ginger. Just give it a smashed ginger on the board and just give it a chop. Make sure to tuck your fingers in when you're chopping like this. Chop. I like doing this because it releases the flavor more. Make sure you tuck your fingers in. Tomato last. Okay. 
now we're gonna saute the vegetables or the aromatics. The chicken fats and the flavor of the chicken is still on the pan. So that's our flavor base. I'm just gonna do the carrots first because they're most harder in texture. And it, I mean to cook through. Not really cook, but to saute. Followed in by the onions. So we'll just do the carrots until they're transparent. Okay. In with the ginger, garlic. Let's get the through. I can smell that. What I'm doing here is called layering your flavors. If you layer flavors properly, then your dish would come out spot on. I'm gonna add in the tomatoes now. Wow, I can already smell the ginger and garlic coming through. So you know that the flavor should contrast with each other just as well as the colors do. I'm just gonna add in the pepper and salt to bind all the flavors together. It's really good. So what I'm gonna do now is just gonna add in this already um, stock that I've already dissolved in water, in warm water, and just let that simmer for about three minutes doesn't have to be that long because this is just the flavor base to go with your chicken. What, what I've done, done earlier with the chicken, chicken is I've seasoned the pan already with the, the taste and the flavor of the chicken. All the flavors are already incorporated with each other. It's already been simmering for three minutes. I'm just gonna switch off the stove. Or switch off the flame rather. It's ready, I can already smell everything. Everything's already well incorporated. Very aromatic. Okay, the next step, I'm just gonna put the chicken, transfer the chicken into the casserole dish. If you don't have an oven, you can just cover this up. Do it all in a pot, cover it up. Just let it sit on, a, on the stove on low heat and cook as long as you like, as, as long as you're covering it up with a foil. Okay, now I'm just gonna add in the sauce. Because we already have coated the chicken with the flour, the sauce should thicken. Cover with the shiny side of the foil down. So it reflects most of the radiation or the heat. Don't have to be fancy, just cover it up. It stops the moisture from escaping. Okay. This is going into the oven for about 30 to 40 minutes for at 200 degrees. You can go longer if you like, but I'm just doing it for 30 to 40 minutes. It's been 30 minutes now and I'm beginning to smell the aroma. It's starting to fill this kitchen, so I need to take this thing out. It smells ridiculously good. Okay. It smells really amazing. I mean, my mom you always tells me this. I mean, you, you would know something is thoroughly cooked or it's ready when you can smell everything. And in this case, I can smell everything from the carrots to the onions, to the garlic, to the ginger, and even the chicken. There you have it, viewers, a chicken Maryland casserole. This has been Cooking with Brain, and I'll see you guys next time. Oh my gosh, that casserole looks amazing. I have to tell you everybody, I love chicken. I am a big chicken lover. I love chicken and I love eggs. You know what else also comes in eggs? Chocolate, especially when it's Easter. Anyway, we're gonna take a really short break right now. When we come back though, we're gonna be joined by Brian Bell as Leon walks us through some of the Easter specials that Brian Bell has going on. So everybody, stick around for that.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back once again to House and Home. If you're just joining us now, we're bringing you the show from Lane's Ten Pin Bowling on top of the Lamana Hotel. Isn't that awesome? I said this before, but I just can't get over the fact that there is a bowling alley on top of a hotel. Anyway, moving on with the show. Actually, before we start, did you know that the world's tallest Easter egg was made in Italy in 2011, and it was about 10 meters high? That is a giant egg. Anyway, we're going to move along with the show right now. Anybody out there who loves Coleman products, here's Brian Bell with their Easter specials on Coleman. So, here's Leon with more. Easter is just a couple of days away. I know you're looking forward to it just as much as I am. So in this segment, I'll show you some of the great products you can find here that can help you celebrate Easter better. One brand that is synonymous with Brian Belt and with this time of the year is Coleman. So we'll see some of the products from Coleman that you can find in our Brian Bell shops to help you celebrate Easter better. Let's go take a look. This is a time when we remember the death of Christ for mankind. There are lots of activities and gatherings to commemorate this celebration. There will be a lot of traveling done on almost air, land and sea. And one great brand that you can use during this time is Coleman. Coleman is a diverse brand that can assist with all your gatherings and travels this 2018 Easter period and you can get Coleman from Brian Bell. We live in a tropical sub-Saharan climate where we experience a lot of rainfall and also a lot of sun. Now being under these elements for too long can cause you some damage to your skin and also to your mind. As Papua New Guineans, we love to stay outdoors. It's just in our nature. And a simple and effective solution is to get a Coleman gazebo. It's the best of both worlds. It's easy to erect and you can spend time underneath these gazebos, keeping away from the elements and enjoying the outdoors. Coleman's certified laboratory tests show that these gazebos are the best at reflecting harmful UV rays and thus promotes a cooler atmosphere for you to enjoy. So, instead of trying to tough it out indoors, get one of these gazebos and enjoy our natural environment. The added benefits is its portability or it's easy to move. It's also easy to set up and it's also versatile and you can use it in a number of different situations. Now the next product from Coleman are the Esky or the range of Eskies that we have here, from small, medium to large. These Eskies are perfect to take with you during Easter to celebrate the best possible way you can. And in PNG we've used it for a long, long time now, so you know that this is a quality brand. Now, these Eskies are perfect to take with you on your road trips or to that picnic spot with your family or friends or your mates or that watering hole where you can better enjoy your time and keep everything in these Eskies. These are a known companion that you can chuck on the back of the ute and take out with you so you can enjoy your Easter better. We have the massive marine coolers, the mid-range Coleman Eskies and the smaller Coleman Eskies that you can choose from. We also have many different features on these Eskies that give them the edge over other brands. Now the first product that I want to show you from the Coleman Eskies or the range of Coleman Eskies that we have is smaller and it's our 16 can soft cooler. Now this is made from material but at the same time when you open it up it's spacious, there's lots of space to carry everything you need and it's easy to carry around so you can take it with you anywhere you want to go. There's ample space to fit all your drinks and food for your Easter booms and gatherings and it's easy to carry and you can take it with you pretty much to anywhere you go. And once you're done, you can store this away very easily. The next product is slightly bigger, which is the 42 can cooler that we have from Coleman as well. This is perfect during Easter if you want to carry a heavier load because with the handle and the wheels, you can cut around heavier load with ease during this Easter break. There is lots of space allowing you to store all your goodies with your cut lunches and drinks and it has great insulation to keep your drinks cool. The fixable handles allow you to adjust just the right height for you to cut your food or drinks around without a hassle. Now the next and the final product from Coleman or the Coleman Eskies that I want to show is this 142 liter marine cooler from Coleman. This is perfect because of the sheer size and you can put anything in this cooler whether it's going out or coming in this cooler or Esky is great so you can take with you anywhere and it can help you enjoy your Easter better. Whether it's fishing, hunting or an afternoon with your mates and family, this is the Esky that you want to use during this Easter break. Oh, that's the spot. Now, 
If you've been into Brian Bell lately, you've seen these posters called New Sensations. What it is, is basically we've got new products here at Brian Bell that we're showing off. One of them being Crest Clean. Now, if you're after affordable products to clean your home, then this is perfect for you. Where was I? Yeah, that's the spot. Yeah. With all the gatherings and kai kais and parties that will be on this weekend, you and I both know that we will need to do a lot of cleaning. And this range of affordable cleaning products can assist you. Crest Clean is the name, cleaning is the game, and Brian Bell is the shop where you can find this new sensation. Now back to our Coleman products. The last product from Coleman that I want to show you, which is perfect for Easter, are the foldable chairs that we have in stock. And these foldable chairs are perfect because they're portable and they're also comfy to sit on. Now standing for extended periods of time can hurt your legs and in turn hurt your back and I know you don't want to be nursing an injured back all throughout your Easter long weekend. Well, these chairs are perfect because they're easy to carry around to each of these gatherings that you go to and also you can sit down, it gives you comfortable backrest and a good firm place to sit on. These foldable chairs also come with added features like the drink or the cup holders so you can store away your drinks, sit down in a comfortable seat and enjoy your gatherings. Of course, this is portable, so you can take and carry this chair with you to any gatherings you go to. Once you're done, simply fold the chair and take it back home with you. It's not heavy at all and is a great companion during this Easter break. Don't put yourself through the stress of standing for extended periods of time. Get a foldable Coleman chair from Brian Bell. Now, of course, during this time of the year or Easter, everyone goes on public holidays, including us here at Brian Bell. So if you're wondering what times we're trading because you want to shop with us because you have a bit of time, then here it is on your screen. Vision City will be open all long weekend. On Good Friday, only Vision City and Mount Hagen Home Centers will be open. On Saturday, Vision City, Gordon's Home Center, Lay Plaza, Medang, Goroka and Kogopo Home Centers will be open. On Sunday, only Vision City and Gordon's will be open and on Monday, all our home centers will return to normal working hours. Well, there you have it, folks. If you're after some good products this Easter long weekend, then come on into Brian Bell and check out Coleman. It's a great brand. It's a quality brand that you can pick up with stuff like foldable chairs, eskies, and gazebos, or stuff for the outdoors, so you can better enjoy your Easter break. Also, if you're wondering about our tra trading hours, then come on into the shop and check it out for yourself, or go onto Facebook, like our page, and check out the extended times on there. And if you're if all else fails and you can't remember anything, just remember that Brian Bell Vision City will be open all throughout the Easter long weekend. So go and shop at Brian Bell over there. And always remember, quality products, great services and great value, that's Brian Bell. Until next time, goodbye and God bless. Thank you so much for that, Brian Bell. Those Coleman products are amazing, and those Easter specials are making them more affordable than they ever have been. So a huge thank you to you. Anyway, we're going to take a short break right now. When we come back, though, we have Taubman's joining us once again for some more DIY painting tutorials. Anyone out there who loves painting, for example, if you're an artist or if you're an architect, please stay tuned to check out this awesome Taubman's DIY. Coming up next after these messages. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome once again to House and Home, your one stop for all your home lifestyle improvement needs. If you've just joined us, we're bringing you the show from Lane's 10 Pin Bowling, situated above the Lamana Hotel. I just can't get over that. It's a bowling alley on top of a hotel. I mean, how insane is that? That is completely awesome. Anyway, moving on with the show, next up, we're joined by Taubman's as they show us how to paint a stair tread. That seems pretty interesting because I myself am a artist and I do like painting and expressing myself with colors and art. So I think this is gonna be pretty interesting. So anyone out there who loves painting and using art, better stick around because this might be just for you. Here's Taubman's with showing us how to paint more awesome stuff. The stairs. Have you ever thought about the difference the stairs does to our lives, be it at our homes or in the office? The stairs plays a very important role. 
Imagine a two-story building without these stairs. How would you get from the bottom to the top? The stairs makes it much more convenient and easier for us to move up and down. Hi, I'm Bruno, your top men's paint expert. In our last segment, we painted the handrails here at the Scripsy Union House here at Tokarara. For our segment today, we are painting the stairs. We painted the handrails, fixed rocks, a beautiful warm thing which can be comforting, energizing or relaxing. It's a welcoming versatile color that can transform your home into spaces of calm. Now as you can see here, the stair trades are made of wood. A stair trade is the horizontal portion of a set of steps on which a person walks on. It is very important to always wipe down the surface that you are going to paint. That way it gives your paint a good surface to sit on. If there is old paint or the surface is a bit rough, you need an 80 grit sandpaper to sand the surface and then sand down with the fine sandpaper to smooth it ready for painting. Now we apply our Tobman Strain 1 wood and metal primer. It is always very important to prime your surface before you start painting. Priming ensures better adhesion of paint to the surface, increases paint durability, and provides additional protection for the material being painted. Now for our color, we have chosen a dark blue color called the sapphire. Our dark blue alongside the warm pink will together in unison give a feeling of comfort, energy, integrity and loyalty. Exactly what an organization like the Scripsa Union believes in. Now apply three fine coats and let it dry for at least two hours between coats. Both the water base and the oil based paints offer good durability and look. However, water base is environmentally friendly. So, if you love the natural look of wood for a job the way I do and you are cautious of the environment, then apply a water based paint. There you have it. Our stairs and the stairs here at the Scripture Union House are done. Join me again on our next Tobin's DIY segment. Goodbye. Thank you so much for Tobin's for making that segment a possibility and reminding us that we can make anything our own if we choose to splash a little bit of color into it. Anyway, we're going to take a really short break right now, but when we come back, we got some more product testimonials from Nisian Beauty. Anyone out there who loves the products from Nisian Beauty or likes uh, making their hair their own and expressing themselves through their hair and makeup, please stay tuned. This next segment is going to be all for you.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to House and Home. So next up on the show, we're joined by Nijin Beauty, who are going to show us some of their new product testimonials on their new Gras Bilas hair food oil. Now, I don't know about you guys at home, but I'll probably need some of that. <laughs> anyway, right after that, we're going to be joined by Billie Jean, who's showing us how to make a facial scrub. I think I'm going to need that, too. Anyway, <laughs> let's, uh, without any further ado, head on straight into this segment. Hi everyone, my name is Lisa. Um, I want to talk to you about this product of um, Grass Pillars Olive Oil, which has changed my hair, the way it feels and the way it looks. You know, I have this love and hate relationship with my hair. On some days it does what I want it to do and sometimes it doesn't cooperate at all. But, you know, it's hard to find a good product that understands my hair type, my hair texture and you know, my hair always looks dry and my scalp would feel itchy at times, you know, when the weather is really hot here in Port Moresby when it's sweaty too. So I would scratch my scalp and which you all know, it caused dandruff. And I didn't have time to attend to my problem, you know, like I was a busy person. I wake up early to work, then I go for training and then I go back home. I just eat, sleep, you know, I was so tired that I just go and just sleep. And you know, as day passed, my hair never get, my, my hair couldn't grow or even get better because of the dryness and the dandruff was, it was really a nu nuisance. That was um, up until 2016. I asked an islander friend of mine um, who has a fine smooth hair. Like, I mean, every day, you don't see a islander with such fine hair. Anyway, she introduced me to this product I'm holding right here, um, olive oil hair food that was doing wonders for her hair and I was wondering what she did to her hair. The same day I went to the shop and I decided to try the product out. Even though we, we have like different texture, hair texture, I just can't take it, you know, the itchiness and the dryness was just killing my looks and my hair and as they say, the, as they say, um, the beauty, the beauty comes from the hair. From 2016, I started applying the Grass Pillars Olive Oil F Food. Every day after going through my normal routine, I apply the Grass Bilas olive oil through my hair. Then I section it with a tail comb. And uh, using my fingertips, I, me um, I message through my scalp. And, and then I style, the, style my hair the way I wanted it to. I could feel the difference as soon as I used um, this product. My hair's been rough. I couldn't scratch my scalp no more. My hair was so soft, it was moist. And even my family and friends, they were like, oh, what did you do to your hair? And I'm like, oh, no. And I told them about this hair product that I was using. And I haven't changed my hair routine since then. Um, I kept it the same and I, because I loved it. Um, it's simple, um, user-friendly, and it is simple as that. Just give it a try and see it for yourself. Mission Beauty Grass Villas, it's all about loving you. Hi viewers, welcome to another fantastic edition of Fashion and Beauty. Now I will be showing you a simple home cosmetic that you can do at home. There are a lot of facial scrubs that you can find at your local pharmacy, but what I will be showing you is with some things that you can find in your kitchen. So let's get started. Things you will be needing for this facial scrub are a half a sea salt, a half a cup olive oil, uh, two slices of lemon and two slices of orange, a bowl, a juicer or a blender if you have one, a spoon, a little jar to keep the final product. Firstly, take the slices of lemon and orange and extract the juice using the juicer. You can add more oranges if you'd like. 
If you're going to use the blender, you can use the fruit peel as well. Citrus fruits are rich in vitamin C and can solve skin issues such as acne, irritation, and oiliness. They have antioxidants that is believed to slow the aging process. Now that you know a little more about the healthy and delicious group of fruits, I hope the experience of eating them is 10 times more enjoyable. With my mix in the bowl, I'm going to add in my sea salt now, a half a cup of sea salt might sound ridiculous, but it is combined with a generous amount of olive oil and citrus juice, so it's a great balance. And olive oil. Olive oil has multi-purpose usage and is unbelievably healthy. This is why doctors and scientists all around the world encourage us to increase the intake of this oil. Now start mixing by stirring until all the contents are perfectly blended. You can find all these ingredients at your local supermarket. Uh, the lemon should be at one kina, um, the oranges should be less than five kina, um, the olive oil, the small ones should be at um, 10 kina. So all of this is less than 20 bucks. Now, when you're finished with your mixing, you can pour it into your jar. Your facial scrub is ready. Pour some into a bowl. Damp a facial cloth and gently scrub your face. Be careful not to use too much, as this will burn your face. Sea salt was referred to as the white gold in the Middle East back in the day and is a common element used in the beauty industry. It is great as it helps remove dead or dry skin cells and heals chapped lips. When you are done, wipe rinse your face with lukewarm water. This will leave your skin soft, smooth, and renewed. I hope this beauty tip will be helpful and also adds more confidence to you as a person. Until next time, bye. Thank you so much, Nijin Beauty, and thank you so much, Billie Jean. I think those beauty tips will go a long way in making people a little more beautiful. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna take another short break right now. When we come back, though, we've got me covering Toro Gaming's latest FIFA tournament. Stay tuned for all you FIFA fans and video game fans, because I'll be going in-depth this time and seeing who wins this time. <laughs> Stay tuned. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to House and Home. So right now, I'm at Toro Gaming's latest tournament, a FIFA 18's champion match. So let's head on in and see who wins, who loses, and who the better player is. The FIFA 18 Champions Tournament took place last Saturday on the 24th of March, and as expected, drew in the numbers. As FIFA is one of the more popular and accessible video game titles that Palm residents play, this was no surprise at all. The competition was indeed packed and ready to find out who the best FIFA 18 player was. So, in order to get a feel of the competition, we got to have a chat with some of the contenders who finished their first game to see how they went. So hi, what's your name? William. Nice to meet you, man. So can you tell us about the game that you just had? Well, it didn't go that well. First of all, what went wrong was I picked a horrible team. I've never used this team before, and their overall is 
seven, uh, 78 in attacking and the only thing that was good was them their mid defense it was 80 and but everything else about the team i disliked <laughs> well there are some good thing good things example like i cross like a cross in soccer you know you got a cross a cross is when a winger um a winger kicks the ball in the air all the way to the striker okay so i crossed it in and when i wanted to score it it it, went, uh, it became a bicycle but i didn't score i missed like that's a like that's one of the highlights but i missed so hi what's your name uh, my name is john gonzalez nice to meet you john could you tell us about the last game that you had was it good was it bad and what were the highlights uh the last game i had well it was uh, very competitive my competitor was very very skillful and really well very good and yeah you know you can't underestimate anyone out here everyone here has played fifa very well and yeah so basically some highlights probably the third goal i scored to re relieve all the stressness and pressure all over me and yeah it felt good so yeah so hi what's your name my name's clarence nice to meet you clarence so could you tell us about your last game um I went into my last game and I won 2 1, but my competitor was really, really good. It's just his, his, his defending was a little bit off. His team was inter. Yeah, that's how I won. So when we played, I scored one goal. I tried to defend, but he, he scored another. So I scored and I made sure that I defend until the time went. So, hi, what's your name? Bernard. Nice to meet you, Bernard. So, could you tell us about the last game that you had? Oh, uh, it was. Good, yeah, competitive but good. Um, yeah, I won my last match 2-0, so yeah, it was good. Okay, so how was your competition there? Ah, uh, yeah, that pretty tough in tournament, so yeah, all competitive, all that. All right, man, that's awesome. So are you still in the competition? Where are you in the game right now? Uh, yeah, we're still in the uh, knockout stages, um, or the group stage, uh, qualifying for the knockout stages. I just played my first game and like two more to go so hopefully get some wins and move on to the next round. Well next up I'll be challenging a guy and I think the, ma the match is gonna go well for me because um, on the board of all the teams and the players like his score was lower than mine so I, th I, think, I think I might be able to beat him. Okay that sounds amazing man. So where are you in the competition right now? Do you think you're gonna win this game? Um, well to be honest, not really. Why not? It's because, um, you know, there's a guy I used to train with, he won the last competition. And I think if he makes it to the finals, I won't get a chance on winning. But, but I think I won. Right. So, I understand from everyone here that you actually won the last FIFA tournament. Uh, now, given this time around, do you think you can take that home again, the winning prize? Um, yeah, that I'm not sure, so I um, hope I defend my title this time again, so yeah. Alright, right, that's awesome, man. So, could you tell us a little bit more about how you play? Are you a very competitive person, and do you play FIFA a lot, and do you come to tournaments like these very often? Uh, yes, so this, uh, these tournaments are pretty good for, for Papua New Guinea, for Mosby, bringing gamers together, and like having fun together, and knowing new people. Yeah, I'm pretty competitive, yeah, like everyone else out here, we're all good. We all come together, we all compete, and yeah, have fun, and that's all this game's about. Well, that yes, I come to these tournaments often, and I am a competitive person, like sometimes 50-50. Uh, yeah, I attend a lot of FIFA tournaments here, hosted by Toro Games, so yeah, I'm like probably one of the usual faces here. Um, I only come to tournaments if my parents allow me, and and I like playing FIFA a lot because it's, it's really fun and yeah, that's all. Alright man, well I wish you all the best in your future game and good luck! Alright man, well that's it, thank you so much for doing this. Good luck to all these gentlemen in their next games, but speaking of these games though... In order to have tournaments like this, there is a lot of preparation and planning that goes into making it all possible. One of the biggest issues is setting up the matches and keeping track of them. Though, thanks to Telecom PNG and their amazing speedy 4G internet, planning and keeping track of these tournaments is made even easier with the use of a website called challenge.com. Being always online for the duration of the tournaments, which go on for about 5 to 6 hours on average, can be quite taxing and costing. 
Using Telecom's 4G internet, make sure these results are fast, easy, and always connected. Telecom 4G's data plans are honestly the best in the nation for playing online, organizing online, and basically everything to do with online gaming. You want to update your consoles, download game demos, get the latest news in tech and gaming, play online with all your friends? Well, then Telecom 4G is the way to go. It is widely regarded as the best for online gaming locally as well as internationally. Not to mention the best at online anything. I mean seriously. If you're a gamer who loves playing online, then go for Telecom. Even if you're someone who doesn't enjoy gaming, you won't be disappointed. Thanks, Telecom PNG. But back to the tournament, the grand prize of a thousand kina went to Jeremy Latz, who won his game in a stellar finale match. And congrats to Clarence, who won two new games and a Toro Gaming t-shirt for winning the breakdancing competition. Well, there you have it, folks. If you want to take part in more competitions like this, head on down to Toro Gaming for just that. And if you want more coverage like this, keep watching House and Home. We're going to take a really short break right now, but when we come back, BSB shows us more of their products. And welcome back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. So, next up on the show, we're joined by BSP, who are showcasing some of their digital products. You know what my favorite thing about BSP is? Personally, I think their mobile banking is awesome. Whenever I need money and I'm out in the field, all I need to do is tap a few buttons and bingo, I've got like 10 bucks, like phone credit, I can get power from my house. It's just super convenient and it's there whenever you need it. Anyway, enough about that. Here's BSP with some of their digital products. Good evening viewers and welcome to another BSP segment. BSP continues to promote electronic banking via the use of the internet, mobile phones and cards. But why should we use these channels of banking when most of our transactions use cash? Using these channels can be convenient, cost effective and safe. Let's take a look at the app costs. When BSP talks convenience, we put our money where our mouth is. BSB has more than 9,000 FPOS access points nationwide. The FPOS points are updated to enhance your payment and experience to cater for the new EMV chip cards that are being issued. Where you are, you can conveniently use a BSB FPOS to pay for your goods and services. You can even perform a balance inquiry for your account prior to making a payment. FPOS payments are practical, simple and fast. For merchants, BSP FPOS is a great business solution as it provides the convenience for your customers. It adds value to your customer service delivery and is a safer option to receive payments. Our GPRS FPOS terminals are wireless, so if you have to deliver goods and services, customers can make the payment when you deliver. For example, pizzas or gas delivery. When rushing to the shops to make a purchase, you don't need to get cash at an ATM and then go to the shop. All you require is your Kundu card and the FPOS to make a convenient, hassle-free purchase and then cash out. When you purchase goods and get cash out, you only get charged one service fee. This is not only cost-effective, it also saves you time. Using BSB FPOS instead of carrying too much cash around is safe and secure. The secure payments of large amounts are best done via FPOS and other electronic means. Payments done through BSB FPOS are processed in real time. A confirmation is given and a receipt is generated as a proof of payment. It is always a good idea to keep a small amount of cash on hand for market, PNV fares or lunch money. BSB FPOS terminals can accept a wide range of cards, including foreign cards. You can always check with the cashier to confirm cards accepted. 
For BSP card holders, you can use all BSP-issued cards via the BSP F-Post terminals, including the chip-enabled Visa Debit and Corporate MasterCards. If you are a customer or a merchant and you would like to know more about our F-Post services, please contact our Customer Service Center on 320-1212 7030-1212 or email service at bsb.com.pg You can also visit our website on www.bsb.com.pg Well viewers, that's all we have for you this segment. Do join me next month for more BSB updates. Goodbye. Thank you so much, BSP, for that, and we'll see you again next month. But unfortunately, we have come to the end of yet again another episode of House and Home. If you guys want to catch up on any of these episodes, you can always find them on our Facebook page, on our YouTube page, and on the MTV Online website. And if any of you want to get in contact with us, ask us anything about this episode, or any of the other previous episodes, or even any of some of the future plans that we might have, don't be afraid to shoot us an email or Facebook message us, and we'll get back to you as soon as we possibly can. Anyway though, from everybody here at the House and Home team and the MTV team and also everybody here at Lanes, we'd like to wish you a good night, pleasant viewing and we'll see you again next week.